Kia ora koutou katoa. Thank you to the organisers for inviting me to speak with you today. If you don't already know me, my name is Siobhan Leachman and I'm a Wikimedian. I edit multiple different wiki projects, including English Wikipedia, the data repository Wikidata, and the image repository Wikicommons. I'm also a binomia scribe, so I use the website binomia.net to digitally link collectors of specimens to the specimens that they've collected. I've added all sorts of information and links in my slides, so feel free to use the bit.ly link or the QR code to find out more. Today I want to show you how I research entomologists and how I link them to their contributions. This slide shows the general workflow I use to improve knowledge about entomologists. I'm going to explain this workflow to you and also hope to give you an idea of why I do this work and how it can be used to benefit entomological collections. Now, as a New Zealander, I'm obliged to work some sort of reference to the Lord of the Rings into my presentation. And this is it. Of all the projects I contribute to, the one project to rule them all is Wikidata. Now, Wikidata is an openly licensed, multilingual, linked knowledge base. To give you an indication of how huge this knowledge base is, when I last checked, Wikidata had over 6.3 million people items alone. Wikidata can be edited by both people and machines and is constantly being enriched and improved. It also links to multiple other databases, so it acts as a database hub. Wikidata be can be queried and can be used to answer questions which might otherwise be really difficult to find a result for. And all the data in Wikidata is CC0 licensed and so can be reused by anyone for anything. But importantly for my work, Wikidata is where I can add my research findings about entomologists and where I can then link them to such things as their co-collectors, the institutions that hold their collections, to their scholarly publications, and to databases and websites that contain further information on them. Let me take you through my workflow step by step. First, I have to find an entomologist. Now I can do this in a variety of ways. I often come across people while researching other collectors in scientific literature placed in digital repositories, such as the Biodiversity Heritage Library. Alternatively, I could come across a collector when I'm transcribing entomological labels in citizen science websites, such as Notes from Nature or the Atlas of Living Australia Digivol project. I can come across entomologists through museum websites. Another method I use to find people is via Binomia. Now, Binomia is a website developed by David Shorthouse to ensure that collectors or scientists who identify specimens get recognition for their work. Binomia uses the data natural history organizations have shared with GBA, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. So I go to Binomia and then go to the data set tab. I then search for the name of a particular entomology data set which be, has been uploaded into GBA by a natural history organization. I then click on the binomia profile for that data set. So in the slide, you can see images of both the GBIF and the binomia profiles for the Auckland Museum entomological collection data set. I then go to the st agent strings tab in the binomia profile for that data set. And this will give me a list of raw, unconnected names of specimen collectors that have been listed on all the specimens in that data set. And these names are not linked and need disambiguation. That is, someone needs to come along and work out who these names relate to. And often that someone is me. Now, I particularly like working on women. By researching women entomologists and their contributions and then placing these data into the wiki ecosystem, I'm aiming to improve the coverage about these women. I'm also giving other researchers as well as institutions that hold the collections of these women the opportunity to reuse these data and to work on them. So once I've got the name of an entomologist, I then go about researching that person. I normally start with a plain Google search and then I'll move on to a full text search of the Biodiversity Heritage Library to see if they're mentioned in any publications there. I may do a full text search of the Internet Archive, hoping for such things as a yearbook result. And then I'll go along to genealogical websites such as Find a Grave or Family Search in order to see if I can find their birth and death dates. 
And while I'm doing my research, I'll either create a new Wikidata item for that entomologist or I'll enrich their existing Wikidata item. I'll add statements and references supporting those statements. Here you can see the Wikidata item for the entomologist Wilmette Cockrell and just some of the statements on her Wikidata item. To get an idea about how much data can be added to an entomologist's Wikidata item, here's just some of the properties that can be used. Now, each of these statements can link the entomologist to other items in Wikidata. And it's this linking that's important because it creates this web of knowledge about the entomologist and their work. And the Wikidata item can also be linked to identifiers created by other databases for that entomologist. Identifiers like library identifiers, identifiers for archives or biographical databases, museum identifiers, genealogical database identifiers, the list just goes on. And by adding these institutional identifiers to Wikidata, Wikidata then becomes this hub linking to numerous institutions that hold information on that entomologist. And remember, my aim for doing all this work is to make sure that these entomologists get credit and recognition for their contributions. So when undertaking this research, I prioritise finding two really important pieces of information. If the entomologist is living, I really want to find their orchid identifier. If the entomologist is deceased, I want to find their death date. And the reason I do this is because I want to add the entomologist to binomia. To do this for a living entomologist, as I've explained, I need the ORCID identifier. Now, ORCID is a non-profit organisation that allows living people to register and create a persistent digital identifier for themselves. That ORCID identifier distinguishes that person from every other person. And this is the reason binomia uses ORCID identifiers for living people. However, if the entomologist is deceased, I will need a Wikidata item that has a death date statement on it. Once I've got this information, I can manually add the entomologist to Binomia and then start attributing specimens to them. Now, this attribution work will then create a Binomia profile for that entomologist. And the binomial profile shows things like the countries they collected in and the dates they did their collecting. It gives a visual summary of the collecting and identifying work of that entomologist. And the profile also shows who the entomologist collected with, and it can also give an indication of the scientific impact of the entomologist collecting or specimen identification work. The binomial profile can do this because GBIF generates a digital object identifier or a DOI for every download of specimen data. And when researchers cite this DOI in their research publication, GBIF can link that publication to the downloaded data set, which of course includes all the specimens that are contained in that data set. And because Binomia digitally links those specimens to their collector or the person who identified those specimens, the scientific impact of that collecting or identifying work by the entomologist can in turn be linked to the scientific research that used those specimens. So for example, here you can see 17 specimens collected by the entomologist Marjorie Towns that were contained in a GBIF data set and that data set was used in research that helped generate a 2022 publication. Now the binomial profile can also tell you what institutions hold specimens collected or identified by an entomologist. And this information can then be added to the entomologist's Wikidata item via a collection items act statement. And this is important because it can really help the Natural History Institution to become better connected in the Wikiverse. And it can also inform the institution whose work is in their collections. And if the collector or identifier is deceased, I can then, once I've finished my attribution work, make the collector profile in Binomia public and add that Binomia identifier into Wikidata. So at this point in my workflow, the entomologist is in Wikidata with reference statements about them and their work, as well as connections to other databases, including a link to Binomia, 
which in turn links the entomologist to their collecting or specimen identification work. And because the entomologist is in Wikidata, internet search engines can find this information. Natural history institutions can also download, reuse, or link to this data. For example, in the middle here, there's a screenshot of Te Papa Collections Online showing that they link to Wikidata in their website and also in their collection management system. And this linking can help improve efficiencies of their own disambiguation work with their own collections. And because the entomologist is in Wikidata, they'll also be placed on a Wikipedia editor articles needed list. Now, Wikipedia notability criteria is much higher than the Wikidata notability criteria. But by summarizing and linking information about the entomologist in Wikidata, I hope to help inspire more secondary sources to be written about that entomologist and their work, which can in turn result in that entomologist hurdling the Wikipedia notability criteria and enabling a Wikipedia page to be written about them, which again increases the profile of their entomologist and their work. So if you're keen to attempt to join in and undertake any steps in this workflow for yourselves, I've added some helpful links in the slide to assist you in your linking journey. Again, see the bit.ly link or the QR code at the bottom of the slide to obtain access. So thank you for listening and I'm extremely happy to answer any questions anyone may have.